All right, hey everybody, what's happening? It's Ed O'Keefe and I'm welcome to module one, part one of the flywheel method uh, training. And um, I, I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of like the story behind creating the dental implant uh, new patient flywheel method. It started, <laughs> it started uh, right around 2000 and I would say almost like 2006, 2005. Um, I was with my mom <clears throat> uh, who's over there. Mother of 13 kids, June O'Keefe. Um, and I was sitting with my mom and dad. And I had been working with dentists probably for about two years at that time. And um, um, well, anyhow, I'm gonna tell you the rest of the story after I show you some. So, so what my mom shared with me, being someone who had worn partial dentures and my dad as well wore full mouth dentures um, their whole life, or like for the last so many years, um, is what sparked the beginning of me working with, um, probably over a hundred dentists. We, we, we had sold my courses, um, to thousands of dentists, but the, the dental implant, uh, patient attraction system that I, at a particular time was licensing to over a, a, a hundred dentists, uh, cause it was territory exclusive. Um, that, um, system was born and it really revolutionized my whole business because, uh, I found that working with, uh, general dentists who placed implants was the most fun, uh, was the most profitable for everyone, myself and them, as well as, uh, helpful to, towards their patients. And, um, the type of marketing that I was teaching and trying to get dental offices to employ uh, fit perfectly like for that we and I'll, we did a whole we had whole systems of things I can share some of that with you and just give it to you guys since you're in the system um, that worked really really well but they were more like how to grow your your how to attract new patients uh, with families um, how to get referrals reactivations how to do open houses like that was stuff we were doing but the dental implant stuff was the most fun stuff now for you, for you to understand like how this works, let's just talk about what traditional dental, like I'm still amazed that this is still how dentists promote their dental practices. After, I think I started in dentistry in like right around 2003, I exited around 2010 to 11, around that phase, maybe 2002 to, you know, around that time. And the, the dental implant component was born around 2005, 2006. I'll tell you by the end of this video, like why I stopped working with dentists at the time, uh, part of it was really good reason. Part of it was kind of just immaturity on my part. Um, because I was just in a, uh, I'll explain in a minute. Um, I tried selling a part of the company to again, I can't give you the short version. I tried selling a part of the company. I did sell one part of the company and then there was an opportunity to continue in dentistry. Uh, and I just decided I wanted to go, uh, see if I could grow something new and different, which I did. Um, and I still do. Um, uh, but it, it just was timing, you know, I think, you know, like I was 32, had five kids, maybe four kids at the time, <laughs> who knows? Um, and, um, let's see, let's go back. That was 2000 and, uh, when 2019, my youngest, my twins are five. So I think I had four kids under the age of five and I, I didn't want to be running seminars on weekends. Uh, there's a lot of reasons and I, it was just good timing. It was perfect timing of phase of life, you know, to do something new and different. But let's just go over briefly to set the context up right because we're going to get into like specifics here in the next training on exactly um, how we're going to run your ads, what your ads need to have in it, like content based. So we go context, content, strategy, and then tactic and we link it all together just so you know. And so this is kind of to give you an idea of like why what we do works so much better than what traditional agencies do dental offers why they why they um why they uh just they're, they, they're not getting a lot of you like me, from talking to so many of you like oh, i'm frustrated with the number of all, all on four cases i'm getting i'm their p patients aren't as educated as i like them to be we're spending time people are asking price driven questions like why is that like just why is that in general and one of the things if you've obviously gotten this far it's because that if you if you look at like um, a, per, a person's experience with anything, if 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 they are not giving anything else to compare 
uh, value to or reason to move forward to, they will always go by pure human uh, nature uh, towards a, a price driven question first, because that's just how we um, naturally ask questions. If we aren't educated to ask different questions, right? It's just natural, right? Okay, what's the cost of that? What's this? But if you set the context up right, price becomes and price becomes more about how, how am I going to fund this or finance this or how are we going to pay for this, which is a totally different question than what is the cost? Does that make sense? Because now I'm justifying cost way too early. So what my system does and what the flywheel method does, it, it links a lot of pieces together contextually, which is why people can see the ads we give you and they're not going to be able to rip you off. People can't because because it's more the context. It's a lot of what we do behind the scenes that works. But but really where we, we lean on you heavily is getting the context right and the pre framing right and the messaging right. And that's not hard because we're going to give you 99 percent of that. But working together as a partner in your area is extremely important to us. OK, cool. So let's just go over some basics. You, you've probably seen this before. I've shown this video or this ad before, but. Um, we'll go back. Traditional dental marketing is very brand image oriented, which is some of the examples I give you of ads. It's it's about the office and like gentle care dentistry, where uh, we keep your smile beautiful, uh, and then it's just very uh, logical oriented, and then this is very cost driven. Um, by the way, I'm not, and I want to make. Let me just say one thing. Um, there's I have zero judgment towards any of these ads I show you, like. These people are really super, probably amazing guys or gals who are running an office and they're entrepreneurs and they're doing this. So mass respect. Um, but I, it's my job to point out like what they're doing wrong to educate you and to also create value for them if they ever see any of this. Um, so it's very brand oriented. So it's about the brand, their office. Nobody cares about the office until you grab their attention. And it's very price driven, which as you've seen in, in past videos, if, if you lead with price and discounting, um, there's a context for that. But if I'm trying to sell higher end treatments like um, like uh, veneers or cosmetic dentistry, uh, all on four cases, we'll stick to this because this is really what the, if, but I'm trying to sell bigger cases, um, I, I have to lead with something different, which I'm gonna get to by the end of this video. But this is, um, these are, these are postcards um, from Postcard Mania. So Postcard Mania, mad respect, not hating on you at all. But this is, if you look at all these templates that they give you, um, it's, it's all the same, okay? It's all the same and it's leading with offer. Offer-driven marketing works, 100% it works. If you're watching this, you're probably like, Ed, we use these types of things and they work really well. That, it does work, it does work. It makes um, it makes the amount of work for your staff when it comes to selling dental implants or uh, presenting that you have to have a phenomenal uh, new patient experience, and you're also um, you're also playing the numbers game that somebody's going to uh, come out of that as a uh, implant restorative case, which, you know, percentages wise, people will. Um, our system does not, our system skips this and goes and looks for people who fit our, uh, they're in the, they're in the, they're in the, they're in the frame of mind. And that's where it comes to more of a pre-frame. So let me just talk about this for one more moment. One moment. Do you notice how it's a template, like free consultation, new patient special, free, blah, blah, blah. If a patient gets five of these in the mail, Let's just say three in the same area, same zip code. I'm in, say I'm in 60643 and I get three of these. What is the differentiator between this practice and the other templated postcards? Like, the is all the same. There really isn't, right? So now I go to Google and now I'm in local maps. So now I start looking at location. I look at the face of the dentist, the staff. Do they, do they look at me? I look at reviews. Well, now I just put myself into, um, you know, a comparative model, not a competitive vacuum. So as, as somebody who likes to sell premium services and wants people to, so we can create value, by the way, uh, uh, you can't create mass tons of value if you're just giving away your services for free or very inexpensively because now you're thinking about your own price, your own cost all the time. 
So you can't be as, as focused on uh, creating value and doing a superb premium job. What's the difference? So they go into it. They what they call it, like you know they're they're in the comparative bucket. I don't want people <laughs> in a comparative bucket. I want people to trust me, to know me, to feel like they like me, so that they, despite prices, come to me because they're like, well, that guy may sell services or maybe do uh, dental implants for 999 bucks because I've seen some price driven stuff like that where we do it for $3,000. What's the difference there? Well, it's gonna come down to education and trust, okay? And this is where we understand the preframe. So these were direct mail pieces. Let's look at, these are real Facebook ads based on people that have come through our lead funnel, like uh, use dental insurance benefits before they expire. This is the one ad. <laughs> and it's somebody smiling there. This is not bad, by the way. Like, it's not bad. It's good. It's, it's you know, I'm assuming this is going to people that um, have interacted with your brand. I don't know how well it's working. Um, and then this is one of my old dentists, uh, Sunrise Dental Care. Dr. Vesna, um, you're going to love your new dentist. Book now and mention this post. I love Vesna. I have no idea who she's targeting that towards. It's good to have a uh, premium, by the way, a premium toothbrush for new patients, but there was no context before this. There was no ads, there was no pre-framing these ads coming to them. Another dentist that came through had this one here about dental implants. Um, this is with the only ad they're running in Facebook. I, I have a way of figuring it all out. Uh, $9.99 dental implant special in Monmouth County. Um, that's not bad, but what are you guys leading with? You're leading with price, okay? So I'm leading with price, so someone's gonna come in, they're very price driven. I haven't created value, I haven't created trust, I haven't created authority. They're just there for the discount. So do you see that framework difference? This is another ad I saw on Facebook. Um, premium quality, exceptional service, remarkable dentist. Who gives a rat's behind? No disrespect to the general dentist. Premium quality, exceptional service, remarkably gentle. Um, and um, what they do have great there is in their header, free whitening for life. Uh, I may have had something to do with that brand uh, when it was when no one knew about it. Um, to make it something pretty well known. Uh, but um, what I'm saying guys, if your ad agencies are running these types of ads, you're doing it backwards. You're doing it totally backwards. And for some, I've seen some really good ads that I'm like, wow, they're doing this. It's probably working, but um, it's they don't know how to amplify it and do it better. And what it ends up happening is it puts a lot of pressure. These ads put a lot of pressure right here on purchase, on the sales team. So, so much of your success has to do with how do we take the inbound phone call? How do we uh, move the new patient? Or like we call it, we used to call it the new patient experience. You know, how your hygienist, your, your assistants and yourself work together to create the context that they would wanna buy. That works, okay? <laughs> but the problem is you're leaving out, you're leaving out all these other people the awareness, the interest, consideration, intent, okay? So, let's go back to my story. So, um, back to my story is, I um, I had been working with Dennis on exactly how to change from instead of this these types of ads, how to be more offer-driven, how to solve problems, how to educate. And then I was over at my mom, she tells me this big problem with her partial dentures, and, what, and I was like, okay, mom, well, what annoys you about your dentures? That was my exact question. Like, well, what's frustrating about it? And she went into a 15 minute conversation about all the different problems with her dentures and why she doesn't like them. The food she can't eat anymore, how they rub, how they're irritating, how like she's gotta cover her mouth when she's out to dinner. My dad chimed in a couple of points and I went home and I wrote what I call the magic ad. Now the ad, magic ad, just before I show it to you, the whole idea of the ad is so that it, it's gotta look organic uh, it's what we call an advertorial that people think they're actually reading an article because it's in the newspaper. Okay. So it's an advertorial and, um, <clears throat> the other thing I just want to tell you is that the goal was not necessarily to get people to, to, at the time, I, I, I may change some of that. I, I, I have a different uh, thing on that, just by the way, on the second. 
Um, at the time, the goal was not necessarily to um, uh, right now or get them to call your office. The goal was to get them to request more free information. So I'm not showing the full ad here because in the next couple couple modules we'll go through the 2019 version of how to do this. So this is it looks really ugly. Just so we're all on the same page, this is ugly. Now keep in mind this was in 2006, and we are it, this was designed to be a quarter page newspaper ad in the local newspaper. <sighs> and all it said was attention denture sufferers. Free report reveals the shocking truth about how to stop being a victim to wearing those agonizing dentures. Now, if you don't want to say being a victim, you could just say uh, shocking truth about um, how to stop wearing dentures and have permanent teeth uh, in a day once and for all. Like that's some of the more benefits that are now technology up or a local doctor's free report, blah, blah, blah. And so it goes into it. Now, let me just tell you, these were the results. Within the first couple months, this guy, Dr. Gary, um, had 120 leads. Only 120 leads generated an extra 150,000 in production in the first few months. Now, a few months, the reason why that is so slow is because back then, the first, you know, you it took three to four weeks to even place a newspaper ad. And then also back then, we had to get toll free recorded message numbers, we had to get reports ready, we had to get these, these landing pages. Uh, it was crazy how much work, and um, but it worked like crazy. It worked so well that we had, I mean, over 100 dentists nationwide doing it. And so um, the only blockage to a lot of this stuff was a couple things. One is a lot of guys didn't have newspaper ads that they can get enough traction in. And so... Um, and to build out that system, it, it took work. It took work. They had to get toll free numbers. They had to get their staff doing a lot of work. They had to do direct mail follow up because we didn't have really email. And we didn't have, um, like, email was like barely uh, something people used for business purposes. They were afraid to give it over. And uh, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have Instagram. We didn't have YouTube. I mean, my gosh, we didn't have any of that stuff, right? And then, and then they had to create reports. However, with all that said, it still was totally worth doing. Now, number two, the reason why I stopped doing it was because I was trying to sell the company. Um, and I will tell you this, I made every mistake. Like if you wanna sell your brand or your company, I could tell you everything not to do. Um, but I ended up selling one division of it and then I exited stage right and went into the health supplement business, which I was extremely excited to do at the time, okay? I did not, I think I had made my run for nine years in dentistry, it was like time to go, time to, Time to go explore um, how to, like, can I grow something from scratch again and do it selling a product and doing it not around my personal brand. That was very important to me. And I and I did that and I'm doing it again. Like I, I can tell you on a different training uh, what we're up to uh, that allows me to keep all my, uh, not only my skills sharp, but there's not one thing I'm teaching you guys how to do that I'm not also doing, that we are not doing with, like we are also doing this in multiple markets. Like this is not a joke. We're, uh, we're I know for a fact most agencies cannot say that. Um, they're spending your money where um, we spend our money all the time, all day long, okay? Just so you know. So when we tell you you gotta spend 100 bucks a day to, to um, 100 to 300 bucks a day to uh, depend on your area to syndicate your content, um, we're spending, you know, thousands a day. So, you know, this is not somebody just telling you what to do. We're doing it. So anyway, I don't need to talk too much about that. So why this works? Well, a couple things. One, it's emotion based and attracts people who are experiencing a problem. So when we say like attention denture sufferers. Now on Facebook, on Instagram, you wouldn't do that. Okay. You'd say something like, um, one of the most common questions we have regarding dentures, something like that is, um, especially from people who are frustrated with them are blank, blank, blank. And I asked the question like, well, I, I don't know. I didn't know I was a, a candidate for dental implants or I've always thought that dental implants was too expensive. Now those are like lead in, uh, lead in videos. Okay. Like, Hey, it's Tammy from Dr. Sutter's office. Just make that up. And, um, one of the questions we always get is, um, Tammy, I didn't, I, I've always, I've had partials or I've, I have a cracked tooth or I have a missing tooth. Whatever the problem is, that's how they stay. That's how you frame it. And then you go into the answer. And 
that is just the tip of the spear of now the system, okay? And we go through, you'll see in the next video, like we take very, very specific questions that are buyer intent questions, but they create now a way for us to track who watches it and how now we start leading them down to um, the rest of our strategy, which I'll show you in the next training. Um, that is the beginning of it. So when you look at like the ad like this, I don't want you to be like, oh, Ed, I don't want to run an ad like that. It looks ugly. It's not, it's not brand oriented. And, and, and admittedly, like now being a little bit older and more mature, I can look back at it and be like, yeah, we were being very aggressive with like how we were talking. But, you know, here's the reality. It freaking worked. And the one thing I would say just really briefly is the reason why you talk to people's problems early is because people with problems take action. People who don't have problems and then and they say things like, well, I'd like to have that someday. Like, oh, I'd like to have, um, you know, uh, veneer someday. Um, and if I ask the question like, well, what would need to happen to like move you towards doing that now? You're trying to move somebody, you're, you're selling, right? Um, you can utilize video ads to help sell people through, right? Um, and we teach that in the next few modules, just a couple down. Um, but one of the things I want to say to you really quickly is um, the biggest thing is like, are you are you selling to somebody? Like if my kid just came up to me now in my office and said, hey, dad, I got a blister on my foot. OK, cool. Go put a Band-Aid on it. Right. So my response is I'm not I'm not really worried about it. you got a blister. OK, cool. Go put a Band-Aid on it. Put maybe like a little whatever Neosporin on it and uh, go have fun. And then there's no sense of urgency. There's no like, how bad does it hurt? Oh, it's a little irritating. Okay, cool. Now, but if when if you've ever done like a marathon or you do ultra running, which is or you've done any like climbing, like I do a lot of different stuff, your foot care is so vital. So if you start getting uh, over rubbing on a certain part of your foot and all of a sudden there's a blister, but I got 40 more miles to go, we got to stop what we're doing right now. We got to like get the best pack out. We got to make sure that it's covered. We got to make sure that it's sealed. And here's the other thing with that is that the pre-care of that is so very vital. So it's it's like, are you selling something that there's a thorn, you gotta get out of the uh, foot, or are you selling something that is, I'd like to have it someday? And see how that difference is? So if I if someone's like, ah, oh, I kinda like, I don't know, it'd be good to have, I kinda, uh, well, no, that person's not gonna buy. So we gotta sell to people that are have problems. Now, the other part of the system that is so important is that the reason why it works is obviously, if these problems, um, I, I should show, I'll show you the next couple of things. Like I, I looked at, a, I audited a couple um, Facebook uh, ads or like Facebook pages yesterday. And I looked at some really, some of these, uh, some of these uh, doctors who are coming through our system as leads have amazing videos sitting on their platform that only have like a hundred views, 144 views, 365 views. Then I look, when did this thing get posted? Oh, it was over a year ago. So then you divide that by 12, they're getting like 30 views a, a month. Well, what if they were able to put five bucks, 10 bucks a day behind that video and that ran all the time and it built what I call a competitive vacuum bucket. That's what we call it, a competitive vacuum bucket. And then we sent our offers only to those people. Uh, when that person is has the blister, meaning uh, metaphorically, they've hit that point where now they are ready to take action my ad is in front of them. We sell a course, um, it's like 5,000 bucks in, in, um, in a how to start grow your, your health brand, you know, like a million dollar health offer masterclass is what I call it. Um, and when we, when we audited all our customers that came through, we noticed that there was a two to four month lag between people purchasing or creating interest in purchasing. And they all had a story about why the timing was right now, okay? And so, like I said before, the reason why this system is, and we're gonna automate all this for you. We're gonna show you exactly how we do it. Uh, maybe not all of how we do it, but like with when we do it for you, there's things behind the scenes that we do uh, that make sure that you, this is happening. And the reason why is because 97% of dentists focus here we we will focus here because there's low hanging fruit here, especially if people have already engaged with your brand and your practice. But all the heavy lifting is done up here. And so the system starts right here and moves all the way down, just so you know. 
So 75 to 95% of your potential patients are in this bucket right now. And by you running only Google Maps, local maps, and only relying on your team, you're really not communicating to 75 to 95% of your future value to your practice. You're waiting until they come into your comparative bucket. And we got to move them out of the comparative bucket into a competitive vacuum. So that's kind of the two things. And so if we do this properly, which I believe we will together, um, you're going to be the one person doing it. And people are going to be like, well, how are you doing it? And like, I, I don't, <laughs> you don't need to tell them. You say, hey, uh, like people will say, people will come up to you and be like, man, I see your videos everywhere. That's amazing. And then some people will start trying to model and copy you and they won't be able to do it because they don't know, they don't know the magic actually is happening about, it's a more about a, a matrix, like we call it the triple stack method, the halo method, and the carpet bombing method, which is not my term, but a really famous internet marketer. And there's a couple other like little things that we put them in together and that all together that creates the flywheel method. It's a system. It's not, people are like, well, what does your agency cost? You, well, we're not an agency. We, we may look like an agency, but we're, we're bolting on a new system onto your dental practice and working as a strategic partner. Yes, there's a fee. There should be a fee. You're asking for high experienced people to help grow your business and create your long-term value and short-term value. So anyhow, I'm totally excited. Um, this is just module one, unit one. Next uh, tr next mod or next unit, uh, we're gonna start going through um, exactly the architecture of of creating, you know, what we call like the, the awareness bucket or the awareness model, and then we're gonna start bringing more people in. Now, expectations on this. Um, we're gonna launch a few strategies out of the gate that the goal is instant cash flow to your practice. Um, depending on how good of a job you've done at like growing your practice and the audiences in your area, you might see like people just calling right away, like boom, 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 like where did this free money come from? Um, if, if you haven't done anything, and you're like, got it, I'm kind of embarrassed. First of all, don't be embarrassed. Second of all, it might just take, we gotta, we gotta start the buying cycle of all these people. So the buying cycle may take one week, one month, two months. And the it's, it's called the flywheel method because the more you move it, the faster it starts getting. The longer you wait to start it, it's just gonna push off. And um, so I'm excited you're here. This is amazing. I'm excited to be here with you and um, totally stoked to do this. So let's, Get after it. I'll see you in the next unit. All right. Thanks, guys.